What's up everyone, Thrills Metal here once again. I'm Nick Rock Nick, and I have an album review for you. Once again, this one is brought to us courtesy of Screaming Toilet. Again, fun site full of all sorts of pop culture related stuff. Toys, movie reviews, show reviews, podcasts. Definitely check it out, there'll be a link below in the description. So today I'm reviewing the newest album from Flesh Crawl with their album Into the Catacombs of Flesh. This came out actually last year on Apostasy Records, I believe in November. But unfortunately, it took time for us to get it here. And then, of course, COVID, you know, it fucks up everything. But we finally got it. And I definitely want to review it because I actually really like this band. I saw them play at MDF and they put on a absolutely killer show. So when I saw they had an album that was coming out, I definitely wanted to jump on the chance. Granted, it took some time to get here, almost a full year. But it's here, so I finally got to review it. A little backstory, these guys formed technically in 1991 in Germany. They started off in 1987 as a band called Morgoth, which Morgoth was already taken by a really good band called Morgoth. So in 1990, they changed their name to Suffocation. I don't think I need to tell you that there's another band called Suffocation that flat out owns that name. So in 1991, they changed their name to Flesh Crawl. This is their ninth studio album overall, and I believe the only original member left is their drummer Bastian Herzog. So, lots of lineup changes, but they've always kind of walked this line between Swedish death metal, even though they're German, there's definitely some bands that do that, namely like Rebel and Flesh, and melodic death metal. There's definitely nods to both like At The Gates and I would say Hypocrisy, as well as Entombed and Dismember. So this opens up with a title track, and first you have to get through at least under a minute of an intro, which is just kind of there. It's not really a very dramatic intro, it's just, you know, I guess it's supposed to be, you know, creepy or whatever. It's there, but once you get to the meat of the song, pretty much you're greeted to that balance of Swedish death metal, as in Stockholm, and then Gothenburg, melodic death metal, except we're in Germany. But right away, I took notice of some issues with the production on here. I like Swedish death metal production. You know, I like hearing those big over-the-top buzzsaw guitars, and this definitely has that. They're kind of muddy, though. And then the mix is kind of all over the place. The drums are very, very thin on this. Sometimes they disappear completely. And I'll get to that later, because there are moments where bigger drums could have definitely impacted the moment much more positively. But... It's just kind of an odd mix, especially when you get the vocals in there, which are very clear and very concise, actually. They kind of remind me a lot of, I would say, Vader and even Entombed or Entombed AD, just because the vocals are very out front and they're very intelligible, too. But the rest of the music is very gritty. I think the bass tone is kind of just pushed back in the mix. It kind of blends in with the kind of muddiness of the guitars. Which, that's kind of an issue too, because generally in like Swedish Death Metal, I look for that big, crunchy, buzzsaw tone. Like, it's supposed to be over the top, but not like super muddy. This kind of sounds muddy, and then when you hit the lead tone, which definitely cuts through the mix, it's also kind of dirty sounding, but not in like a good way. It doesn't sound appropriately dirty. These leads are very pretty. They're kind of pockmarked all over. You really don't get a tremendous amount of them, but... They seem like they should sound cleaner. Now this album's pacing is pretty good. They don't like to like put similar tracks behind each other, at least up until the end, but towards the end, I kind of liked the fact that the pace picked up because towards the end it gets more high pace, more energetic, and I really enjoyed that. There's a fair amount of mid-tempo songs. There's some good DB grooves, namely Mass Obliteration, which is just kind of a fun dismember song, honestly big chunky riffs over a good driving D beat, very fast vocal cadences on the verses, they're very punk hardcore kind of delivery, and then it slows down on the double time chorus part, which, you know, pretty cool song, I actually really enjoyed that one. Now one of my main issues on here, and it starts with the next track here, Ossuary Rituals, and it ties into a couple of other ones that really just left me hanging, incomplete thoughts or half songs. 
Osroy Rituals screams this is going to be like the mid-tempo sort of banger of an anthem song, like fist pumping, and it just feels so short and condensed and stripped of any of the big moments that it really never rises to what I think the song was supposed to be, just like this big driving fist pumping song. Some of these songs just seem to end leaving a lot that could have been on the table, and that was very frustrating. Gravemonger. Absolutely nasty, chuggy, slow, brooding song. I love the riff on it. Huge hook. Just one of the heaviest songs on here. And the moment it was really starting to build, I was like, dude, this is awesome. And I hear it start to fade out, and I look at the time on the track, like, oh my god, it's already ending. So much was left on the table there. I thought there was going to be like a big giant bridge, maybe a cool like solo or lead. No, it just kind of ends. And my God, that was frustrating because I was really getting into it. The feel of the song was just nasty. It was just brooding. It had some really cool doom-laden melodies in the beginning. And again, it just left a lot on the table. And then you have Obliteration Bazaar, which is the shortest track, at under two minutes. But it feels like there could have been a lot more there. Like, it's a real thrashy banger of a song. Like, very aggressive, just driven by some killer riffs. And then it just ends. What makes it worse is the song that follows it, Red Streams of Sorrow, feels like it could have been a continuation of Obliteration Bazaar. Like, that could have been a cool bridge part, a segue into the, you know, solos, and then, you know, bring back the main riff that was carrying it. There's a lot of that on here where parts seem like they should have continued on or been moved. Like, entire songs feel like they could have been a part of another song on here, and they just don't stand on their own as well. Like, they're just not as strong as just that solo track on there. And now getting back to the mix part, the parts I brought up about the snare completely disappearing, Balls of Retaliation and Among Death and Desolation, there are parts there where the snare completely drops out. It almost sounds like the entire kit drops out, except for maybe the toms. Laws of Retaliation opens up with, like, big chuggy riff, nice punctuated toms, like, they're really well accenting, and the toms sound huge, like, they're big. Then when it gets into the main, like, groove part of the riff here, you can barely hear the drums. Like, you can barely hear the snare pop. I had to really listen closely just to see if they were actually hitting it. But it's weird because in other songs you can hear the snare clearly, and then in other songs it just completely drops out. Among Death and Desolation, it's in a nice little clean bridge that comes up, like actually one of the cleanest moments on the album, and I think it's one of the best songs of the album up until this point because when it's kind of doing this outro that starts off with this little clean bridge, the drums come in, but I couldn't hear if the snare was hitting. I thought he was just doing like accented cymbal hits while, you know, just hitting the bass drum. No, there's a snare in there, but you can't hear it. And that kind of just took me out of the whole groove there. And some of this just, I feel like they should have just went over this and listened to it and just adjusted some levels, like some minor tweaks here and there, because it could have really helped the album a lot. But there are some really killer songs on here, and I think the ones I liked the most were surprising the ones that were more melodic death metal. On Frozen Ground and Among Death and Desolation, up until that point where the snare drops out, those are just really awesome, well-constructed songs. They feel like complete thoughts. They're punctuated by some really, really cool lead work on there. Not flashy, but very melodic and tuneful, some cool harmonies, very distinguishable, memorable riffs. And this was pretty much what I was hoping I would hear on this entire album. Unfortunately, what I got was just kind of a mishmash of half ideas and stuff that they maybe just didn't know how to end. And it just feels like so much was left on the table. And that drives me nuts because I like this band. And if it was a band I didn't have any sort of attachment to or hadn't seen live or anything like that, that would have less of an effect on me. This, just because I know what they're capable of, I have some of their previous albums, I like them, I just feel like this album's potential could have been more. Maybe the idea on here was to, you know, trim the fat, make it very straightforward. But I think in the process of trimming the fat, they trimmed a lot of meat off of this. So overall, I'm going to give this two and a half stars, and I really wish this was a good album. I was looking forward to reviewing this one. I saw Flesh Call was coming out with a new album. I was like, yes. And this is a letdown. It really is, because there is a lot of potential in this album, and it is hampered by some odd songwriting choices and 
a really bad mix. Like I, overall, this mix just feels uneven. I like the guitar tone. I just think it needs to be cleaned up a bit. I can generally forgive, you know, a not so great mix if the song rings really good, but the song ring in here, I don't know. I just, I don't understand why some of these songs were just condensed to the point where they were half thoughts. And then other songs were just really, really solid and really inspired, and they actually sounded like complete thoughts. So yeah, it missed the mark for me in a pretty major way, but I would still recommend going out and checking it out, just form your own opinion. That's just me. But yeah, it missed for me. So if you enjoyed the review, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe, because we do stuff like this all the time. We will catch you later.